Hello everyone, medical device Matt. Wouldn't be medical device Matt if I wasn't wearing a scrub top. Truthfully, I'm I'm very fortunate to wear scrubs every single day. I do dress up if I'm meeting with uh, customers and physicians, but I'm lucky to have the opportunity to wear a scrub top, scrub bottom, and go into the hospital and work with physicians, work with patients, and I, I do not ever take that for granted. I wanted to talk about one of my first roles, which was a clinical specialist for the pacing division for Medtronic. I think this role is really special because it gives you the opportunity to work in the cath lab and planning the devices, work in physician clinics, checking the pacemakers and defibrillators, the patients that you have implanted with these devices. And it gives you a good sales acumen, clinical acumen, and sets you up for the future. A lot of people looking to break in medical devices thinks the only opportunities are territory managers or those sales reps role. The clinical specialist route, I view as a sales clinical specialist. You're partner to the physicians. You strive for you know great clinical outcomes. And the physicians look to you as a trusted advisor to answer questions about the pacemakers, how to optimize them. And really, I, I love this role because it's set me up for my career at Medtronic. And this role is fantastic for a few reasons. I mean, it could help you break into medical devices with limited experience or sales experience. And it also sets you up for you know a great career in the medical device field, not only in the field sales roles or field leadership, but if you wanted to go internal, by you working in this role with physicians and patients, you have a very key skill, which is the voice of the customer, seeing how hospitals and physicians work. So if you wanted to go in marketing, research, this gives you a really great opportunity and is very valuable. So I wanted to highlight the pacing clinical specialist at Medtronic, What's frustrating is there's similar roles at companies like Abbott or Boston Scientific or even Biotronic. They're all great companies in the pacing division, but each company is going to call this role a little bit different. So Medtronic, it's a clinical specialist, CRDM. Abbott calls it something. Boston Scientific, I think, calls it a field clinical uh, but they're at absolutely fantastic roles where you can, you know, have the ability to live in California, meaning, you know, make decent money, have benefits, and you work on a, a small team, anywhere from two to six people covering a geography. So I want to do a day in life. So this is it's kind of what I think of a, a typical day in pacing. This is after you've been trained and you, you've been in the role for about two years. You feel comfortable in the cath lab with the physicians and you're, you know, firing all cylinders. So a typical day, and this is not being on call, that's one caveat. If you're on call, some of these divisions like pacing or neuro or even ortho, you take calls. So if there's an emergency at the hospital or if a patient's device needs to be checked, one of your team members, or it might be you, will be on call for a day or set up for a week. And you would have to answer that and maybe drive to the hospital to check that device, interrogate it, or even have you know an add-on surgery. For example, someone has heart that stops. And if the hospital deems it worthy to go to a permanent pacemaker, they might call you in to help facilitate and support that case, right? So this is a typical day when you're not on call. You know, typically I would wake up, you know, 6.30 or 7, go through my morning routine. My first clinic would be at 9 o'clock and it would be a, a larger clinic. So 9 to 12, it would be three hours where I would see 25 patients every 15 minutes. And sometimes they would be double stacked. So what would happen is I would get to that clinic early. I'd be ready. Sometimes patients came early. I would say hi to the clinic's front desk and the physicians letting them know I'm there. And I would get to my own dedicated pacemaker interrogation room or pacemaker check room. I would look at the schedule and I had the ability to to see when patients arrived. So when a patient arrived, I would get up, I would walk to the lobby and I would call that patient. Matt Abrams, we're ready for you. Patient would get up, come to me. I would introduce myself. Matt Abrams, hi, this is Matt Abrams. Uh, we're here to check your pacemaker. Are you seeing the doctor today? Bring them back to the pacing room. If they're not seeing the doctor, I would you know, have a special machine to interrogate the pacemaker. And let me show you. Let me see if I have a, a pacemaker. Um, yeah, look at this focuses. Um, this is a pacemaker. It goes under the skin, and it has wires that connect to your heart to help the heart beat by sending electrical uh, stimulation. A new pacemaker that was around right when I was leaving is called the Micro by Medtronic. And this is leadless. So this lives inside of your heart's chamber and is able to send electricity to make the heart beat. That's really fascinating. So for the most part, pacemakers are implanted left sub Q. The patient sits down in the room. I have a special computer with the ability, almost like Bluetooth, to talk to the pacemaker. And when I interrogate the pacemaker, what I'm doing is making sure it's optimized and seeing if there's any arrhythmias. The pacemaker is like a little computer. Obviously, it makes the heart beat, 
but it also stores a lot of information. So I want to make sure that the electrical output is programmed correctly. I want to make sure the pacemaker is seeing the heart appropriately. So when the heart beats, the pacemaker registers that. So it doesn't add an extra beat because it missed that one. And it also has a lot of data, right? So if you have fast heart rates, the pacemaker will record that. And some fast heart rates, you know, from exercise or, you know, sinus tachycardia are usually okay. But sometimes there's abrupt fast heart rates, and those the doctors or physicians would like to you know be aware of. So I would collect all that data. I would fill out a report quickly, right? Because I have 24 other patients I need to see, but I do spend time chit-chatting with the patient, you know, catching up about their family or their vacation. And what's nice in this role is you usually see the patients every three, six, or even 12 months. So you build a rapport with them, and they're like, "Hey, Matt, you know, we saw you last time. We heard you're you know going on this trip or playing basketball." And it's fun. I mean, that's really special. And you have patient continuity, which is just amazing because the patients really appreciate what you do. So I finish the report. Pacemaker looks good. Patient's not seeing the doctor. So I send them on their way. I say, hey, everything looks good. The pacemaker has nine years of battery left on the way out. Check with the front desk and we'll see you back in six months. I go back to the room, look at the next patients here, get that patient and repeat the process, right? So what happens? One of the patients has seen the doctor and there's something strange about their pacemaker. Let's say you know, the electricity needed to make the heart beat is a little bit more than it was six months ago. So I would make the appropriate change on the pacemaker to ensure that we always capture the heart. And I would just let the doctor know, hey, doc, you know, the the energy needed to make the heartbeat went up a little bit. You know, it's an older lead, older device. There's probably a little bit of scar tissue. No big deal. Doctor says, hey, thanks, Matt. Sees the patient and does their, you know, clinical cardiology work up and the patient's on their way. Or sometimes a patient comes in, the device records an arrhythmia. So for this patient, they had atrial fibrillation, which isn't usually deadly. Atrial fibrillation is where the top chambers of the heart are beating very fast. And what could happen is blood could stagnate and form a clot. So the doctor needs to manage that appropriately. So the doctor would look at the chart. I would say, hey, doc, uh, you know, the patient has new AFib. I don't think it's documented in the chart. The pacemaker's first time registering. I just wanted to give you a heads up. And usually that cues off the doctor. Oh, you know, new AFib, let me check to see if they need to be on a blood thinner or what the story is. And there, I mean, you feel like a true partner. You're helping the physician by giving him the data to make the appropriate decision. So clinic finishes, you saw 25 patients, maybe some were added on, maybe some didn't make it. While you're at clinic, your sales rep texts you, hey, there's an inpatient you need to check. A uh, patient came through the ER, is on the floor, they had syncope or they fainted, right? So after you get done with your clinic, you run over to the hospital with your special little programmer. You go by the front desk, you take the elevator up to the units, you find that patient, you know, usually you have their names. So you ask the hospital, hey, you know, where's this patient, Matt Abrams? And they'll say, oh, room 3217. So you run there, patient's there, you open up your programmer, you check the device, device is working well, there's no arrhythmias. So you make that report, put it in the chart, and you let the doctors know, hey, you know, pacemaker's looking great. So that rules out any diagnosis or differentials along the pacemaker lines, right? And then next thing on the list is you have a, a pacemaker surgery. So at one o'clock, you're supposed to be at another hospital working with a doctor to implant a pacemaker. So if someone has a slow heart rate, they've been deemed that they're eligible for a pacemaker, and you're going to support that case. So on your way there, you call. It turns out the case got delayed. And this is very common in medical device, and I do want to emphasize, and I think some other reps are going to laugh. A lot of times in medical device, your time is spent waiting around. Your case or your surgery in the heart OR, the cath lab, was supposed to go at one but on the way there, you call and there was an emergency. They had to bump the case later because a patient was sicker and they needed to take care of them first. And usually what bumps cases is STEMI or heart attack, right? Someone has a blocked vessel, they need to get in quickly, open it up and get the patient back to you know normal state. So you get to the hospital, you check in with the lab, the STEMI's happening, you go to the lobby, you get on your computer, maybe you address some emails or sales marketing, or you go catch up with some of the local physicians in the hospital to talk about new features about your device or just you know, ask about their family and not, you know, always have that pacing hat on. You know, you're staying in touch with the cath lab. It seems about time you head over and look, they're getting ready for your case. So that means they're cleaning the room and then eventually bringing the patient in. And that's not a quick task. And again, medical device reps will joke and laugh about how long it takes to turn over. But eventually your patient gets on the table and the doctor is there to, uh, you know, put in the pacemaker, right? And you're there with the appropriate inventory. And that inventory could be in your car or it could become, I mean, from the hospital stock. And usually in Southern California, it's a mix. Some hospitals own their own product from Medtronic and some hospitals rely on the field reps to bring the inventory in, knowing what the case and what product will be needed, right? So you bring in the right product, a pacemaker with two leads, 
you support the doctor, things are a little bit challenging, so you provide some advice or different accessories such as a stiffer wire. Eventually, the doctor gets the first lead in. He's hooked up to your computer, so you're able to check the lead. He's satisfied, and then you're ready to put the second lead in. Second lead goes in. You know, the, the metrics you use to assess if it's a good implant position don't look right. You tell him the numbers. You don't make the decision. You just you know, relay the numbers back to the physician. He isn't impressed, so he removes the lead. He puts it in another position. This time you test, numbers look great, we're ready. You take the pacemaker generator, that thing I first showed you earlier, you put it on their skin, connect the lead, sew it up, patient's done, they go back to the OR feeling better, right? And that's awesome. The cath lab you develop a really strong relationship with, it's fun to work in these settings. It's a little bit more intimate with the physicians. Uh, opposed to earlier in the morning, you had clinic, and you're, you're really just churning through these patients, making sure you, you know, do everything correctly, but you gotta be on your you know, A game. Where in the lab, you need to be on your A game, but it's a little bit more wait times, you have the opportunity to speak to physicians and the, the lab. Case is done, it's now 3.30. You get a call from your rep saying, hey, there's a you know another add-on case that you need to get to and knock out. Maybe the rep says he'll take care of it. Maybe there's an inpatient on the way home. And eventually you get home, let's say it's 4.30, your phone's not ringing anymore, and that's you know one day. Maybe a typical day, maybe an unusual day for life of a clinical specialist. This is how I got into medical device. I think it's absolutely amazing because in this role you can learn the sales skills from a mentor, you work on a team. I already emphasized the importance of working with physicians and patients and hospitals and getting that voice of customer. And I think it's a really great way to get in the industry. If you have any questions, post them below. I'm also looking for people who are interested in coming on and talking about you know their entry role into medical device and you know any thoughts or grievances they had with it. So stay tuned for Medical Device Man. If you can, hit the subscribe. A lot more content coming. I just figured out how to connect with other people remotely to do interviews with them. So I'm so excited to do that and bring some really amazing content that I would hope is educational. So talk soon.